Hey everybody, welcome to Edit Along With Me in Capture One, where I edit one photo, and I use that as an opportunity to explore some of the tools at your disposal when you are working with Capture One. And hopefully over the course of watching a couple edits, you'll see some tools emerge and see ways of using them and ways of expanding your own workflow. And today we're gonna to be editing this image right here. This is from a workshop that I taught with Mike's camera in Denver, Colorado. And when we start an edit, we think about the thing that we really want to accomplish with the edit. And with this particular one, the issue is that it is very tonal. So here's what I mean by that. Come to the right cursor tool. So here I've got my histogram, and if I highlight over the pixels in the image, you see that bar that tells you the particular pixel I'm looking at where it falls? All of the image falls really inside of that same range, meaning that there's very little contrast in this image. I don't really like that. I want this to have more difference to it. So we are going to be working with our layers tools in order to mask out different sections of the image and to be able to work with those separately. So this is gonna be an exploration of layering and different ways of creating masks, all right? If you are still trying to get comfortable with the idea of adding tools into your tool tabs, I've got a video on that, but effectively, I like to have my layers tool right there inside of my adjustments tool tab and my color tool tab. You'll see I've got it in both because I'm working with layers a lot. Okay, so we want to select different areas of the image. And the first thing we want to do is actually select everything. This is something I do in all of my edits. I'm going to come to plus new filled adjustment layer. And that gives me everything, everything highlighted. And it surprises a lot of people when they're getting into editing. Why would you do that? Why would you edit uh, at, with a tool that lets you select and then just select everything. It seems redundant, but in fact, this is really useful. We're gonna come to rename by right-clicking on the layer. I'm gonna go to, and name this Exposure. Now, why would I do that? Here's the reason why. Right now, I'm editing everything in the frame and I could do a whole bunch of things. I could bring up exposure and contrast and saturation. And let's say that I said, okay, I like the ratio of these adjustments, but it's way too much press M so that I can not view the mask at the moment. I could come up here to opacity and pull down the opacity of all of those adjustments and it just brings them back in total, but in ratio to each other. All right. Now you, if you're editing in the background layer, you do not have that option. It does not exist. And so if you wanted to adjust the total amount of things that you had done in the background layer, you would have to come in and adjust each slider individually. And working with a filled layer gives you so much more nuance and being able to pull back a set of adjustments later on in your edit if you feel that you've gone too far. Really useful. You might just make one and call it new background. I like to make two, one for exposure. Remember, I'm just going to this drop down arrow, new filled adjustment layer, right click, rename, always name your layers, and I like to do one for color. And I do this because I always think about editing exposure first, color second, and then refinement third. And that's exactly the way I set up a lot of my layering. So right now I haven't done anything. I am just creating the layers I know I want to work with. Next one, I want the bird. I want the bird to be its own layer. So I'm gonna to come to the drop down, new empty adjustment layer, meaning I'm going to find the bird and select it separately from the background. All right, I'm gonna want that. Right click, rename, bird. Then I'm gonna to want to right click, new adjustment layer, right click, rename, not bird. Because I'm gonna to wanna to edit the bird in the background separately from each other. There's gonna be a little bit more that we're gonna create, but not yet. So we need to highlight the bird we have four ways of adding to a layer. A brush tool, which lets us just brush areas. The magic brush, which finds similar pixels. So if I were to click inside of here, 
it will find similar pixels that are connected, assume those are all part of the same subject, and it will make them part of the mask. We let it calculate for a second. And once it's done, we can press M to be able to see the mask overlay, press M again to not see it. And you're gonna see me do that several times. Now with this particular subject, the magic brush is actually not all that useful because there's so many differences inside of this bird that I'm still gonna to need to go in and fix all of these. And it's so similar to the background that's creating areas I'm gonna to have to get rid of. That's no problem. It just means that for this image, the magic brush is not as useful. It actually really is useful in other edits, but not this one. Linear gradient creates uh, areas of a mask that are based off of a line and uh, some feathering. And then we can work with a radial adjustment, which is going to find the center. Now for the bird, the best tool we're going to have is our brush. And we're going to need to refine this as we go. But basically, we can come in and just brush in and we're going to add. And that's all well and good for the interior of the subject. But what about the edge? And in fact, we don't want to worry too much about the inside for reasons that you'll see. But what I want to do is find the edge of the subject to the non-subject. And when we come to the brush, we're going to look at uh, coming, let, let me show you that. Come over, right click, and we'll see brush settings. Size, hardness, opacity, and flow. Here's what they are. Size is the size of the brush. Hardness is the difference between the middle circle and the outer circle. So we need to know what the circles are. When we take a look at the brush, we have an inner circle, and that's the main part of the brush. We have the middle circle, and that is where feathering begins. And we have the outer circle, which is going to be the outside edge of the brush. Then we have, if I right click, auto mask. We want to make sure this is turned on because what it does, and I accidentally added to the area there, we'll take that away in a second, was what it does is it finds, is there something that is on the inside circle, but the outside circle doesn't really touch it, right? That those pixels are different. If so, it decides that where that edge is between those two types of pixels is the edge of the subject, and it tries to find that edge. Now, sometimes we're gonna find it does this really intelligently. Sometimes, if the subject is similar enough to the background, it struggles a little bit and we'll need to refine it. So let's take a look at using this. I'm going to just brush here, and I believe this is gonna have a little bit of difficulty telling it from the background. So we let it auto mask. It found an area there that's not the same, but we're gonna to need to fix that. No problem. We're gonna come over here, come back. This is the same tool here as selecting it here. And I think I'm gonna to need to reduce my size. And we're gonna come in, and I just want to highlight the edge of our subject. And you could get the middle, but we're actually not going to need to. You saw it figure out the edge there. I'm gonna come and make this really small in order to try to get the inside of the wing. And with some subjects, this is just a harder process than with others. And that sometimes is the way that it is. All right. How do we get rid of these areas? Well, I've got the eraser tools. One of them is a magic eraser tool. It works the same way as the magic brush, except just to take away. And one of them, of course, is a brush tool that works like the additive brush tool, but in order to remove pixels. And it also does have the auto masking feature, which is nice. Bring that down. right come in here and we will oftentimes want to change the size of our brush tool to match how finite of a job we're doing all right now knowing the way that I am working with this I'm gonna kind of speed up and finish outlining the edge of the subject just as you're seeing and all I'm gonna do is go back and forth between my additive tool and my eraser tool trying to find the edge of the subject.
Okay, so what I have done is outline the bird. And you might think that I need to take my brush and come in and brush in all these sections, but I don't, because I'm gonna come over to the layer marked bird, right click, fill mask. And it fills in the rest. Now, the only thing that it probably got a little bit wrong was this area right here. No big deal, we come to our eraser and we just use that as we've done before. But instead of that, I think we're gonna use the magic eraser and try to remove in here. Come in, click there. Oops, undo that. Maybe click there. And I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so now I have the bird. Took a little bit, but we got it. And now I wanna to come to the not bird. This area has nothing masked. We're gonna right click, copy mask from bird. All this does is copy that work so that I have the same masked area. But now I want to right click and invert mask. And that's gonna find everything that's not the bird. So that's really useful for us. And we're on a really good start. So what do we want to start doing? Well, I wanna separate the bird from the background. So I wanna take the bird and I want to probably add a little bit of brightness to it, right? So I'm gonna brighten up the bird itself. And if I wanna do some dynamic range adjustments, right? So I might wanna come into dynamic range. I might wanna bring in a little bit of the shadows, all right? But one thing that I definitely would wanna to do to the entirety of the image is add black point. So I'm gonna come in here to the exposure, remember this is everything, and Dark and darken the black point. We do that for color saturation reasons. You need deep black and shadow for color saturation to really stand out. And so we sometimes will stretch the shadows in order to add dynamic range, but we will drop the black point. Okay, so what's the next thing we want to do? Well, I could take the not bird layer here, come to exposure, and I could drop it down a little bit. And that might be really appropriate, and it's gonna make the bird stand out. But at some point, we're gonna say, man, that starts to look unrealistic, that the bird is so much brighter than the background. Don't worry, we've got an idea for that. And that's going to be a linear gradient. So linear gradients are something that you know, they existed uh, for a very long time in exposure and in editing, and they did so when you have images that have a big bright sky and you would want to darken the sky. And we've seen with the idea of the magic brush and things like, uh, like that, we've seen those uh, ways of using the linear gradient decrease over time, though we still use them for skies a lot, but there's another way to use it. Here I have light coming in seemingly in this direction. I even have a little bit of light in the background moving like that. So let's reinforce that idea. I'm gonna come in here plus new empty adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename this sunlight. You're gonna see me do this on a lot of images that I edit. I'm gonna grab the linear gradient and move it in the direction of the sunlight. Okay, M to mask so that I can see it. And then with this, I can take this guy here and I can move the mask itself. I can move its feathering point out as well. I want to just start to touch the bird, all right? And I could, of course, take this and I could grab here and I could rotate, but I really want this to move on the line with the light in the background. And now I'm gonna just grab the sunlight layer and I'm gonna brighten it. And I'm gonna reinforce light coming in this direction. Sometimes I'll do this with a scene and add some color temperature as well so that that area seems warmer, but I don't think I'm gonna do that with this image. Now we were wanting to work on the histogram, so let's take a look. We have stretched it a little bit, very nice. So it's coming along. The next thing that we might want to do is just look at the overall exposure. And here we can come to this point and say, is everything as bright as I want it? Well, I could improve everything in ratio, which is why that exposure tool, that exposure layer is so beneficial. Okay. Um, I think I might have taken a little bit too much of the shadows up from there. So I can come back to the bird. I can come back to dynamic range and I can pull my shadows back down. And I think that that's a little bit better. Now, what about the color in the background? The bird looks pretty good, but I want this color in the background to be pretty nice. So I'm gonna to come to the not bird layer, my background, 
and I want to come to the color tab up here. And this is why I like to have layers inside of the color tool tab. And I want to come to my color editor and come to advanced. And there I get to start just picking colors. So let's say, do I want those? I think I want to add some saturation to those, to that tone, right? And maybe make those a little bit brighter. Then I might take my greens, right? I might shift the hue of those so that they get a little bit deeper green. And I might darken that and really start to add in some color. And then I could, of course, come over here, come to full saturation. Now, one thing that's really nice about Capture One is that when you're inside of a layer, you can do any and all adjustments only within that layer. And that's, that's a really big deal, being able to do any adjustment you want only to the selected area. And doing a full saturation adjustment is pretty easy with a lot of softwares, but being able to do literally anything inside of a layer is pretty unique to Capture One. So that is starting to look really good. Now, what else would I like to do? Well, I think I'd like to add some sharpening to the bird itself. I think that that would be nice, um, but I don't wanna add sharpening to the background. Okay, so I could come to the bird, come to clarity, and I could bring clarity up. And let's actually come in a little bit. And I think coming into punch might be nice. And that's the type of micro adjustment that it's doing. And that's gonna make that bird stand out just a little bit more. Very nice, I'm happy. Um, but another way to separate subject from background is to make the background less sharp. Now I could come to my not bird section and I could lower the clarity. I certainly could do that. And that would make the background look more what I want, but it takes away clarity from the tree stump. And I actually don't want that. So here's what I'm going to do, another layer. I'm gonna create a new empty layer, all right? And this is gonna be called not bird, not tree. I'm going to copy the mask from not bird. And now I wanna get rid of the tree stump. Well, let's do that through the magic tool over here. Oops, through the magic eraser, my apologies. And just start clicking, because this is a very different tone than the rest of the background. So I should be able to do a reasonable job here. If you decided to do it through the uh, eraser tool, I certainly wouldn't blame you. I think it's a totally appropriate way to do it as well. Let's just see how well the magic eraser does. All right, got rid of a reasonable amount. I'm gonna click again to erase some more. Click again. Erase some more. And with a lot of segments, this might really be a fast way to remove. We could, of course, come to the eraser. Make sure, of course, that auto mask is turned on. We could come in here and I could come in and just start erasing and it will auto mask as before. Once I've got that, come through and brush. Now, the only reason I really have this particular layer, okay, is because what I want to do is take just my background and I want to lower its clarity. I want to make it a little bit less sharp. And that is a pretty nice adjustment, just so that we remember we have before, and after, it's coming along quite nicely. And now I might take a look at the full amount of what I've done to the bird and say, you know what, I'm gonna drop that opacity a little bit. Just pull that back. And that's one of the major benefits of working inside of layers. And at that point, we could call ourselves getting really close to done. I think I would still wanna come perhaps to color, add a little bit of a dehaze, which is always a nice effect especially do exterior shots. And then, do we need noise reduction? This shot is ISO 250, 
But we've got a question, what layer am I working in here? All right, we're gonna come to the exposure layer because that's an everything layer. And what I wanna do is take a look inside of here and see how much noise do I have that I'm working with. And it's really almost nothing at all. We could add in some luminance uh, noise reduction just to clean that up. And if we felt like we needed sharpening, well, I could do it to everything, of course. Or I could add my sharpening only to the bird layer, which I think makes a lot of sense. Push that in. And that is a pretty nice image. All right, so we explored a lot of tools here today, but in particular, the main one I hope that you picked up on is creating a decent amount of layers so that you can differentiate your edits and make things look really the way that you want. All right, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.